So, we have some stuff to talk about. I think we, we should do. start off with Solo, because my yep. expectations were so low, and they met them. <laughs> yeah. I. What did you think, first of all? Let's, let's start with you, because well, you're the director of uh, the F word. G was on his phone for a lot of time in the movie. I was. It really pissed me off, but I understood why. <laughs> you were asking me a lot of questions. About what? Uh, you were asking me, hey, is that vision? Hey, is this uh-huh. this person? Yeah. <laughs> well, were you Googling it? <laughs> hey, how's the popcorn? Yeah. Hey, how are your Skittles? Okay, you know, I understood why he was on his phone, because it was a boring movie. It was awful. Yeah. Well, okay, I'm not going to say it awful. It was mediocre. It was mediocre. I, I'm not going to say it was awful. It was not a great movie. There was no point where, uh, similar to Avengers, where... Like, you know, that scene where Thor came in where like, Bring yeah, me Thanos. Like, there was nothing so like I, that. I was not, I went in with low expectations. They met my low expectations. Um, it wasn't like it was an awful movie, but it was not by any stretch of the imagination. Great. Do you think if they didn't, ha- if they didn't have the Star Wars, because casual moviegoer, like a friend of the family, I'll put it that way, friend of the joke, <laughs> he mentioned that he didn't go in there with the Star Wars baggage. He liked it. And he liked it. Mm-hmm. But, without, but no, no, no. But without the Star Wars baggage, which made me think, do you think that had something to do with this? I didn't even like Star Wars to begin with. Like after The Last Jedi, don't really care for it. So I came in with no baggage. Nick? I, I, I mean, it's hard for me to go in without any baggage, right? Because Han Solo, the, the, the character when I grew up, that was one of the main characters in, in the first movies that I saw. So for me to, to go in without any baggage or expectation would be hard. Um like my expectations were low, yes. but I, I couldn't sit there and be like, oh yeah, I'm just going to look at it as a regular movie. No, like this is an iconic character and I hope you do somewhat justice to that character because he deserves it. I don't think the characters themselves were bad. Like I thought Lando was good. I thought Han for the most part was like, you know. He was okay. Yeah. But like the plot twists, there were too many plot twists and too many of them were very predictable. Yeah. Like there was five, around five plot twists. At the end of that? Yeah. Which I thought was just way too many. Well, and again, like... Uh, and nobody G had, really cared. Like, I didn't care. G had mentioned a couple weeks ago when uh, Woody Harrelson's character said, you know, you really shouldn't trust me. And it's like, oh, okay, I wonder what's going to happen. Oh, a double cross. Oh, my gosh. I can't believe that happened. And then of course there was it's going to happen. another double cross. It was like a triple cross. Yeah. It was just, whoa. Yeah. Then there was that cool cameo. Yeah. 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 Well, I don't know. Like, people were giving it nines out of tens. And I was asking them why they think that. And they did not back it up at all. They just said, it's a Star Wars movie. Stop hating. Oh, my God. Yeah, I, no. I it definitely wouldn't say a 9 out of 10. I, You know, I, I don't think it was it was in that realm. I would say it was about six. a 5 or a 6. Yeah, yeah um, I think 9. Maybe Disney got to them and paid them some money and they had to say 9. But uh, in no stretch of the imagination did I see that as a 9. I do think it the was popcorn was, it, was an 8.7, though. The seats were good. Yeah. I just want to let you guys, if you guys have seen Solo, which a lot of you guys actually haven't, nobody really cared for this movie. No. Uh, if you guys did see it, let me know your thoughts. Did you like it? Are you Team Solo or are you just like it was boring, it was mediocre? Yeah. No, I don't think it was bad necessarily, just, yeah, it was. It was special. mad, which, you know, I like, mean, it's I one went thing. I the movie not wanting to see it. Like, I didn't really care. Yeah. It's one thing to, I would almost say it's almost worse that it was mediocre. Because like, I mean, if it was really good or really bad, you could say that that movie had an impact on you. The fact that it was so neutral and so mediocre, I think was was almost worse. I think mm-hmm. people were just like, eh, I'm not going to complain, but I'll, I'll, I'll watch the movie, I'll go home, and nothing will change. Do you guys think it was put out in the wrong time? Yes. I think your voice is really sexy, by the way. Well done on that. <laughs> and was it what? Put out at a bad time? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. Well, the audience are is used to December. December is Star Wars of the month. Yeah. They've tried doing it in May, but it always gets delayed to December. So people didn't even know this movie was coming out. Like, I didn't know it was... I forgot it was coming out until a week before yeah. the movie. And it was like, hey, are we buying tickets for Solo? I guess so. So close to Deadpool too. Yeah. Uh, I don't I don't understand what the mentality was there. Um, when you have clear control as to when you could release it as, as the owner of both franchises. Um, Not yet. Wow. Well, Close. Not yet. Pretty close. Enough but... to get bought out. Yeah. Well, Enough that they're competing against each other. Yeah. But another thing with Disney is they are pretty much their own worst enemy because Adam and the Wasp comes out July 7th, I think, or something like that. No, July 8th, I'm pretty sure. July 8th. And then Incredibles 2 comes out July 15th, I'm pretty sure. Two Disney properties, once again, same weekend. 
Are you, are you finding it? I don't know if it's just you, like you or but I, I'm looking at it. I'm comparing Disney right now to the Starbucks in the early 2000s when they would open up like across the street from each other. I was and, not around. For well, that. you you were not around for that. You're right. But um, like, you know, in, in a lot of the United States and, and even in Canada, you'd find that Starbucks would be open on one street and then across the street. Oh, look at that. There's another Starbucks. So you're competing with yourself. That's what I think Disney is doing right now. It's like, I don't know if part of it is just them flexing and saying like, hey, you know what? We don't care. We own the market. We are going to compete against ourselves and just just to show the confidence that we have. Well, have you seen the Wreck-It Ralph 2 trailer? I have. And how they pretty much flexed all their properties? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, there's only one website that came up or whatever, and it's Disney, right? Like, I think they, Yeah, I think those are the, the rights that they have to abide by yeah. in most cases. But yeah. 